I know a lot of you guys want me to get into the NHL banning the pride tape. We're going to get into that later this afternoon. I already had this video prepared, so we're going to start here for today. In terms of mainstream exposure and awareness, I look at the WNBA and the NWSL as being on the same level. Both sports have a small niche audience. They're both kind of these fringe leagues barely clinging to irrelevance. Well, KC, don't you mean barely clinging to relevance? No, I mean exactly what I said. In order to be relevant or to cling to relevance, you have to be relevant. Or at some point, you had to have been relevant. The two dumps, they are both clinging to irrelevance. If they fall any further, we will be talking about them barely clinging to existence. Neither one of these leagues are very transparent with their financials, so this is educated speculation on my part. But I feel comfortable saying that throughout their existence, neither the WNBA or the NWSL have ever generated a profit. You could combine their finances and all you would have is a combined pile of debt. Both leagues, they struggle to draw an audience on television. They struggle to sell tickets to their live events. The WNBA could advertise an exciting matchup between the Mach 3s and the traditional straight-edge razors. Whose beard will be shaved first? Only one way to find out. Donate 10 pesos for VIP access to this exciting matchup in the dump. Of course, the dump will be filled to 30-40% capacity in a high school gym that is capable of seating 3,000. The NWSL heavily promotes the final game of Megan Rapino. They create a marketing campaign targeting the demographic that aspires to be the next shit fuck prepubescent boys. She has spent her entire career in Seattle. If the Mexter was truly an icon, this should have been an easy sellout, right? Instead, Lumen Field was half empty. Both of these leagues, they are severely lacking in star power. Well, KC, that's not true. Megan Rapino is a huge star. Just because you have name recognition, that doesn't mean you're a huge star. It doesn't mean you're an attraction that people are willing to pay money to see. Megan Rapino has never been a soccer star. She's a political activist. But you get the point. In terms of mainstream awareness and exposure, appeal, these two dumps, they're on the same level. They both process the same amount of trash. They both create the same number of stars. None. Matter of fact, when it comes to television ratings, the NWSL actually draws a larger audience. Yet for some reason, the WNBA receives a hell of a lot more media coverage. Huh. I wonder why. I'll explain the possible reason. I'll let you decide. Black players, they make up 16% of the NWSL. In the WNBA, what the mainstream media calls people of color, they make up over 80% of the league. I wonder, I just wonder, if that could explain the abundance of media coverage the WNBA receives. Because I'll be honest with you, I don't know how else to explain it. You tell me how a league that struggles to draw a whoopee cushion to an air compressor, a league that consistently draws less than half a million viewers on television, you tell me how they receive this much mainstream media coverage. AEW is a much bigger draw than the WNBA. I never hear about AEW in the mainstream media. I don't see the media praising Tony Khan for building a wrestling promotion literally from the ground up in less than, what, five years? The dump has been given 27 years on TV, 27 years to build and draw an audience. And they are still consistently beaten by just about everything on television. But the media, they're not going to tell you that. No, 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 no. Headline at the LA Times. Is the WNBA witnessing the big breakthrough that it's been waiting for? Um, They've been waiting for this big breakthrough for three fucking decades. The short answer to your question is no. Headline at Yahoo Sports. Las Vegas Anonymous faces in the big three super duds in NYC set game one viewership record. Excuse me? Come again? Um, clearly, me and the mainstream media we have very different definitions of breaking records. This past Sunday, Alvin Kamara, he broke a record. He became the all-time leader in touchdowns scored for the Saints. Now, when you look at the list, 
Alvin Kamara, he's number one. There is no one else above him. There is a litany of names below him, no one else above him. That is the definition of breaking a record. Game one of the WNBA Finals, it drew 729,000 viewers on ABC. Well, KC, that is amazing. This league has burst into the mainstream. Little American girls have stopped dreaming about their wedding dress and now dream of wearing the Bob Griner beard. While 729,000 sounds like an impressive number when compared to recent WNBA ratings, which are usually so low they can't be measured, believe it or not, 729,000, that is not a record-breaking number. Back in 2000, Game 1, WNBA Finals, it drew 827,000 viewers on Lifetime, the network dedicated to women. Now, this was during a time when the WNBA was trying to appeal to normal women. Now, obviously, they can't broadcast their games on Lifetime anymore since this league stopped catering to normal women years ago. The mainstream media, they are touting this success of the WNBA. Going into the finals, they were claiming that this was the biggest matchup in the history of the league. Even the usually logical New York Post was biting into the shit sandwich. <laughs> Now, you might be wondering, if this is the biggest matchup in history, how come they didn't draw 1 million viewers on network television? That's a damn good question, because it's happened before. 1997, the WNBA Finals, they drew almost 3 million viewers. 3 million. 98, 1.1 million. Now, according to the media, those matchups, they were flaccid wieners when compared to the Super Dong matchup. So how come they couldn't convince a million people to watch the exciting magic of pretend basketball? Luckily, the media, they have an excuse. I mean, a reason. The WNBA, they were facing stiff competition, actual competition on Sunday afternoon. They were going head-to-head -head against the NFL. Now, why do you think that is? I mean, Kathy Engelbert, she's not stupid. She's a smart woman. She knows her collection of dump divers have no chance of competing against the NFL or the NBA or the NHL or college football or college lacrosse or the wiener eating contest or cornhole or NASCAR or SpongeBob or Paw Patrol. So why would they schedule game one for the chase for the golden toilet against the NFL on a Sunday afternoon? Maybe, just maybe, Kathy Engelbert and the WNBA didn't have a choice in the matter. The WNBA, they don't have any leverage when it comes to negotiating time slots on television. If the NBA tells ABC, we want our NBA finals broadcast in prime time, you know what's going to happen? They're going to be broadcast in prime time. The NBA has leverage. ABC knows that the league will deliver 10, 11, 12 million viewers. Now, would the WNBA have been better off with Game 1 airing in prime time on ABC on a Tuesday night? Of course they would. But why would ABC do that? I know ABC and ESPN claim to be the home of the WNBA, but at the end of the day, they're still a business. Why would they risk their entire primetime lineup for a league that can't draw an audience? You know what comes on ABC Tuesday night? Dancing with the Stars. You know what that show delivers? Two, three million viewers, with the vast majority of them being females with money. What does the WNBA deliver? A collection of woke welfare recipients with no disposable income. The remainder of the WNBA Finals is going to be airing on ESPN. Again, why do you think that is? I mean, if this league is surging in popularity, if this league is breaking records and dominating ratings like the media claims they are, why wouldn't ABC be begging to broadcast every single game of the finals? Because none of that is true. 729,000, that is a great number for the WNBA. Great job, ladies, good job, but it's horrible for ABC. Let me put that number in perspective for you. Last Friday, final game for Megan Rapino. CBS, they decide to broadcast the game in prime time, a decision that I would imagine they ended up regretting. A game between Nebraska and Illinois on FS1, two teams that no one cares about. They doubled the audience of the final game for Megan Rapino. For her final game, the Mexter drew 683,000 viewers on CBS, 46,000 less than game one of the WNBA Finals. Now, just to be clear, 
This was a meaningless game. This was a regular season game in the NWSL, and they drew 46,000 less than game one of the WNBA Finals. These are the things that the mainstream media conveniently leaves out when covering ratings for the WNBA. They tell us that the WNBA is breaking records when they're not breaking any records. They tell us the WNBA is surging in popularity when they're not surging in popularity. Megan Rapino is a media darling. The media loves the Megster and her Sue Nestor. But no one in the media is talking about Megan Rapino drawing 683,000 viewers. But if the WNBA draws 683, it's a celebration of rainbows and woke wieners. After game one, a veteran employee named Kelsey Plum, she attended a press conference. If I remember correctly, Kelsey was one of the anonymous faces from Las Vegas last year who showed her feminine side by toking on one of Chris Cuomo's cigars. Hey, it's me, Chrissy C. Tom Brady. Tom Brady is a minority owner of the Las Vegas anonymous faces. Why did he buy a dump? <laughs> Hell if I know. I would imagine that Tom needed a good tax write-off. WNBA dumps. They are very, very good tax shelters. They lose a shitload of money, which causes the tax obligations of rich people to decline significantly. The great one. He has been a minority owner of this team all season, but he's never once attended a game. Just like the fans, Tom Brady, he can get into these games for free. But for some reason, hadn't attended a game all season until this past Sunday. Over the weekend, Tom Brady, he was having he was having a difficult time going to sleep. So he decided to cure his insomnia by attending game one of the WNBA Finals, a guaranteed cure. After the game, Kelsey Plum, she was asked about the attendance of Tom Brady. Watch for yourself. I looked at him and I said, it's about if and Tom you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously she's just joking around here, but the reason it's funny is because there is truth to the joke. Mark Cuban, he never misses a Dallas Mavericks game. When Jay-Z was minority owner of the Brooklyn Nets, he was constantly in attendance. Gail Benson, always at Saints and Pelicans games. Now, that doesn't mean they are at every single game, but when people own a franchise, they are usually in attendance for the games, except in the WNBA. If the owner of the team can't bother to show up, why in the hell would the fans? What does that say about the product on the court? In all honesty, 729,000. That is a great number for the WNBA. Now, like I said, it's horrible for ABC, which is probably why the rest of the games are going to be on ESPN. But the number is great for the WNBA. But here's the thing. Don't sell it to me like this is some record-breaking performance. Don't sell it to me like this league is breaking into the mainstream. Just tell me the truth, which is something that the mainstream media in this country seems to be allergic to. But give me your thoughts. 729,000, Game 1, WNBA Finals. Now, they were almost beaten by a meaningless regular season game in the NWSL. Does this mean that the WNBA is suddenly surging in popularity? Does this mean that the WNBA is breaking into the mainstream? Or is all that just media propaganda? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate you guys and your continued support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.